Thanks, Brandis. Just who were the people that stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6th? A new analysis by University of Chicago's Project on Security and Threats dug into the demographics of the 377 individuals who were arrested for the Capitol attack. And the study's author says he had expected to discover something about the economic conditions of the rioters, but was surprised that the data told a very different story. Joining us to discuss his findings is University of Chicago political science professor Robert Pape, who serves as director of the school's Chicago Project on Security and Terrorism and lead investigator uh, on this report. Uh, Professor Pape, uh, welcome back as always. So your last study looked at some of the, the financial conditions of some of the rioters. This study looked at uh, demographics and where they came from. What did you find? Uh, well, we found something very different than what we were initially expecting. So, so Paris, um, I started this coming as a professor from reading uh, a lot of the studies and doing studies on political violence around the world, where economic factors uh, play a role. Well, that led me to expect economic factors may play a role here. But right off the bat, when we look at the 377, uh, and with this large research team of 20 people, we can examine all the court documents. We can systematically study thousands of pages of material. We see that almost 45% are CEOs, business owners, come from white collar occupations like doctors, attorneys, accountants. Well, if 45% are coming from that kind of economic background, you can see poverty is really not likely to be. Um, and so that opened our eyes. That's the beauty of social science. It can tell you things that you didn't expect. And so then you, you can and, go further. And you can conclude that ec economics isn't really the primary driver here. And let's take a look at the map uh, that you produced of where the alleged insurrectionists come from. You know, Heavy Mountain, Texas, Pennsylvania, New York, Florida. But... Uh, county by county, you looked at uh, trends and which counties they came from, and what did that tell That's you? That's right. So we started to look at the counties, and what we discovered is, first, over half come from counties that Biden won. And that means uh, we also know they're coming from urban areas. Then we did statistical analysis, and it turns out the more urban the area, the less likely was a county to have an insurrectionist related to Capitol Hill on January 6th. The more we rural the area, you mean. The more rural the area, yeah. the less likely. Um, we also looked at percent Trump vote, and the more Trump vote, the less likely was a county to send an insurrectionist. Striking, because many people would think, well, the more rule, the more vote for Trump. No, that's not it. The key factor that we found was the counties that lost the most white population, that is non-Hispanic white population since 2015, were far more likely to send an insurrectionist. And that's a finding that would hold by chance fewer than by chance, one in a thousand times. So you can't get that by just flipping a coin. This is an extremely robust finding, Paris. So as a social uh, scientist- we controlled for population size. We controlled for unemployment rate. We controlled for distance to Washington, D.C. So what this factor uh, that jumps out at us tells us is that this is probably has something to do with the fear of the great replacement. And that's why we did another study. So on when, top when you of say great first, replacement, though, what does that mean? And as a social scientist, are you saying that the conclusion here is that the rioters that you found were driven by racial resentment or racial anxiety and not necessarily economic? We're finding evidence that the key driver is fear that the rights of Hispanic people and black people are outpacing the rights of white people. That's what we mean by the great replacement. And the county level analysis that I just discussed is data po is point number one, but we went further. We conducted a nationally representative sam uh, sample of all Americans with the National Opinion Research Council at the University of Chicago. This is one of the most respected polling agencies in the world. We did a gold standard um, survey, and what we discovered was that 4% of Americans believe that both the election was stolen in 2020 and would participate in a violent protest. That's 10 million people. 
Paris. That's a, that's a lot further, of people. We that, further study that right there is uh, we need to take this seriously, which is why people like former Secretary of Department of Homeland Security Jay Johnson here are this is getting a lot of people's attention. Then further, we further analyzed the risk factors. And again, the risk factor that jumped out in our survey was the belief that the rights of Hispanic people and black people are outpacing the rights of whites. So multiple data and points that you're finding here that, that racial resentment, racial anxiety is the main driver here. And as you're saying, you know, talking about beefing up security, uh, intelligence, that's not going to be enough. So what can this policymakers is, take away from this study uh, on a practical level to deal with this? That this is rooted in social change. This is rooted in our society. And what that means is we need top academic experts to work with top policy practitioners with our government together to do more work to thicken up the understandings that we now have and to develop creative policy initiatives. This is not going to be solved, Paris, by a quick reach to a jobs program or a quick shoot from the hip solution. This is serious because this is pointing to quite a volatile 2022 election season and more violence against minorities. So we need to take this seriously and it needs to become a national priority. A landmark study here and given your work studying national security and extremism in the Middle East, I'm sure that public officials and other stakeholders are, are going to be paying attention to this. And thank you as always for joining us. Absolutely. Absolutely, Paris. Thanks for having me.